I, so I, I, I didn't think he meant like the manualist. I thought he meant like the, the egg beater. Yeah, like the, or something like that. Yeah. Something you could like chase somebody with. Because if you just no, chase no, me with a regular whisk, I'm just... not running. I'm going to like, hey, go for it. Like, right <laughs> And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel all under Linux. Joined every week by these two clowns. I love them to pieces. Not really, but hey, the, I'd still like to see them in pieces. Yeah. I like that soup. was an emotional roller coaster. I, I don't know how to feel right now. Uh, don't worry. My feelings there for you, baby. <laughs> Jordan Zvang, up top and down there. That is Pedro Mateus together with your chat realm <laughs> dynamic. Joining us live, helping us form cocaine Voltron. Before we get two started. Kids. We do like the best canes, man. Christmas times, Christmas, Christmas time with Voltron. <laughs> I would watch that. I, I, I would yeah, watch I that. Would. I would watch that filmation special. Like Skeletor Dude. shows up. Like, Are you yeah, kidding? Voltron. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's been going on since last week? Not a whole lot. Uh, the one thing I got suckered in, I got suckered in uh, another DAW. Typically we use outdoor to record the podcast and take care of all the mix minusing and streaming and all that in real time. But uh, mix buses, it's another just more of the same, a little, little different. It's analog modeled. It's got a bunch of fancy stuff under the hood. And I had bought a copy of Mixbus maybe two years ago. Never played around with it. I just bought it to support him because I'm, that's me. I'm like, if you're going to support Linux, have some of that. And it's not terribly expensive. It's like 80, hundred bucks, something like that. Send me an email. I'm like, Hey, we just released a new version. You can get it for 20 bucks. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just figured at this point, I might as well sit down and teach myself how to use it. So that's been this week. Pretty much in and out. And I'm um, putting the last little bits on the Mage Well video. I just because I had to tear um, Thread Booper apart again so I could get that shot. So I went ahead and like fancied it up. I put one of the um, knock to a uh, fan shutter upper cables on it. Ah, throw toss a doily on there too, just to make it look fancy. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> fan shutter upper cables. That's the technical term, Patron. I mean, with your. <laughs> Well, I have one, like six or seven of them in a box. Yeah, I knew I knew I had some. That that's how that started. I'm like, I know I got a couple of those somewhere. And I got like one maybe because like I I downsized all my all my old like box shit, and that's where I kept all the. Uh, you threw that's where away I kept a knock to a box. I did because it was like yay thin, and I'm just like I don't need whatever's in here. And oh, but it's got out. the Velcro, and you can <laughs> open it and close it. No, this was just a regular cardboard one. Oh, it's some peasant and stuff. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, I put that on. It works great. I'm um, keeping everything cool. And um, hopefully by like the end of next week, I'll have that video out because there's a bunch of cool stuff I found out about the card that uh, YouTubers have not. Yeah, that's my week. But you've been staring at Windows. I have. I was told that my squat rack would chip in two to three business days. It, then I got an email from the trucking company that's supposed to send it here. And they said it would be here on the 30th. Mm hmm. It still says it will be here on the 30th. Did you call? So I <laughs> no, because it's the weekend and they're not going to pick up their phone. I'm going to get a voicemail. Uh, so, yeah, I've, 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 I've been staring, waiting desperately for my thing to arrive so I can do squats. Isn't that and, one of the most destructive things? If you know something's coming in the post and you oh, it just yourself, ruins your day. Yeah, yeah like, you're, you're like up and the entire day. When do you start giving up? Uh, what, what, okay, when does it first come into your mind that okay, maybe not? Usually about five p.m. for me if I'm going. Yeah, to go for four, four, four thirty, five o'clock. Like I, I still got hope right up to about five, and I'm like, no, this is probably. Am happen. Amazon will do it up to ten p.m., and I think that's kind of spoiled yeah. me. Amazon's a wild card, <laughs> and UPS. I've had UPS show up at eight p.m. I'm like, all mm. right. So, if, but after five, I, I start letting yeah. myself go. Like, okay, maybe it's not coming today. Just yeah. maybe not. Maybe not. It's not coming. Pedro, are you coming? <laughs> that didn't come out right. Well, uh, th that's a little too hot. Are, for are you, uh, are you ejaculating on that one? No. I, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I did spend yesterday evening uh, because I was running Fedora 33 on the Nutbook, the ND 550D. 
Yeah, the Toshiba NB 550D. Okay. D D's not booked. And I it's like, okay, I it's running Fedora 33, 34 is now out proper, so let's do the update. It took an hour and 30 minutes to finish after doing the pseudo DNF system upgrade reboot. Yeah. <laughs> okay, first off, first off, Pedro Mateus, you're just a monster because I I saw you post that in Discord. I'm like, you just wanted to watch it suffer. That's it. Pedro's got there made some popcorn. Like, I was kind of curious to see how long it would take because I'd done it on the laptop that is my actual laptop and it took 15 minutes yeah so okay all right cool. i i have i have a sneaking suspicion it's because you know their their mirrors are getting slammed quite a bit at the moment what with it just coming out it, it, no the the issue is the processor we're talking about a ah. dual core one gigahertz amd processor from way before so, the Ryzen day okay 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 because like I, so i recently maybe maybe not you know, this was a dual core it was like an old like second gen i3 i ran an upgrade from 32 to 33 uh -huh. a couple yes, weeks Ago. That, that, took, that's that took like an hour. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah the, the, the good performing insecure CPUs. So right. I, I genuinely, <laughs> I said it jokingly to Pedro because, well, half jokingly, because I, I didn't know where he was at. Was he like legitimately waiting on this thing to get done so we could try doing something or was it I'd suffer my pain? I was just suffer. waiting for it to get done to see how long it would take. <laughs> so me being the loving person I am, I'm like, you know, you can probably just pull that NVMe out and put it in your desktop and let it finish real quick. Would that actually work? Was Yeah. Probably, so, yeah. Probably is where I'm at on this. <laughs> Like, I, I've done the I mean, pull NVMe no out of one machine. <laughs> I've done the pull NVMe out of one machine and drop it in the other. I was like, oh, it boots up. All well, right. Well, I'm talking Happy. about like, okay, do that, then run update on it, then mm -hmm. put it back in the other machine. It's. I mean, yeah. it's not like That's you're. Like it's you not don't like you're install in, any weird drivers or anything in between. Yeah. Even, even <laughs> then, like the the in like you can you can install like Nvidia drivers and move it to a, on a on a disk, move it to an AMD machine, and it'll boot up perfectly fine. Um. I don't, I don't, I don't know. The, uh, it's not like you're running Gentoo yeah, and like everything is compiled now. with. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah it, there is that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's not like you're compiling everything with dash O three or everything. There's no platform yes. specific optimization. So like, oh, yeah. Binary packages. Yeah. yeah. Hey, um, do you think we could try the same thing with horse? Absolutely not. No, uh, no, uh, 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 you need to be running like GCC 1.6 and it's okay. the steam. Update. Update. Well, we're going to be talking about GC GCC in a little bit, but not not right now. No, man. Uh, good news, everyone. The Overgrowth developer will fire games files. Antitrust lawsuit against Valve. Yes, the suit says Steam <laughs> suppresses competition and takes an extraordinarily high cut from developers. Com com coming from the makers of Overgrowth, that game that costs $30. Well, forever <laughs> and it was questionably finished mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah hop hop suit man uh they're just going through this i think this was the guy who uh started humble bundle way back in the day so we should point mm -hmm. out that humble bundle is not they're owned by ig and this has nothing to do with humble bundle itself but this is just more the same though isn't it you know when you think about it um should steam be forced to like lower, like their cut. Wouldn't that be a deterrent for people? Like, you know, Steam's giving you less money. Why would you try to force Steve to change that? Because if you're another store, you're like, yeah, that's good. Come use our store. But, I mean, it it, it is presence. That I think the argument, yeah, the, the argument here is that the other stores are not competing with Valve because they can't, and it's Valve's fault somehow. Despite you know. Timmy paying uh, people to be exclusive on their store and their store still being shit. So, and it's still, it's still according, according to this lawsuit, it's still not enough. Yeah, so they, they, they basically go on to say, like, Valve changed the uh, developer license agreement that lets you say that you can't sell, like, an inferior version of the game on another store. You have to keep prices consistent, which is a thing that other storefronts do do. Gen generally, it's a practice I'm not a fan of. I think you should just let the people set whatever price they want. But like, mm -hmm. I, I I don't know. I'm I'm torn because there are legitimate criticisms of Steam and Valve. Mm -hmm. Um, but yes, 
Antitrust is not one of them. They are like, like, okay, I, I will freely admit Valve does have lock-in. It is very, very light touch lock-in because you can use Steam sockets without having to actually use Steam. All the VR stuff is entirely open source. Toggle is open source. Dixvix is open source. All this shit is not required for to, is not locking you into the Steam platform per se, but it is there. It is Valve's Valve is the one providing the stuff. So I, I, I see where criticism could exist. I don't know though, but th th like Pedro was saying, these stores are failing to compete. Uh, the Epic Store doesn't have anything comparable to a feature set to Steam. All they have is free games. Itch gives developers a much higher <laughs> cut. They have no infrastructure backing up their developers beyond uh, beyond bundle they support have and the store page. The and, one and store the store page. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Can I posit this to both of you? Is mm -hmm. it seems like we're, there's like an apple and wrench comparison because Steam. Nobody matches like the stuff you're rolling off, the work they've done with Proton, DXVK, uh, Remote Play, all these, you know, and just the Genghis stuff that you're going to get access to, especially as a developer. Nobody's offering that, you know, you, you have like the Steam store, like we have a no shopping cart. You can buy stuff and that's it and be done with it. So that that's not anti-competitive. You don't even feature parity. It's not like, oh, we do the, all this stuff too, and Valve's doing something to keep it. No, you just have a shit service compared to Valve. It takes a yes. long time and a lot of money and a lot of hard work by some very clever people to get Steam where it's at in much arguably half-ass shape. Then you know, it does a lot of dumb stuff as to what Jordan said. Now, here's what I want. You shouldn't do it, Valve. Don't blame me for this. If you ever do this. <laughs> I want this because I'm a bad human being and this is a bad idea is if I was like, you know what? Hey, we'll match Microsoft because that's kind of what I think all this started rolling down because Microsoft's like, we're only going to do 12% cut and everyone went, yeah, but it's Microsoft store. So mm, yeah, shoot. Xbox one <laughs> uh, series. <laughs> no, 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 no. The Xbox games are still 30%. Mm. <laughs> it's just the windows games. <laughs> So, <laughs> Val, don't do this. Um, but in the alternate Walter Walterverse, uh, do a twelve percent cut for developers that are willing to get a Steam store page. That's it. Just I mean, the store that, page. That, now, hang that, on. That, to finish this, <laughs> no forms, no reviews, nothing else. No Steamworks integration. No trading cards. No screenshots. No broadcasts no community tab at all mm -hmm. just the store page that's it 12 percent cut now i say that like just jokingly but we all know nobody would take that fucking deal yeah i i mean like I, they could they could even still include stuff like remote play because you don't even need to be you don't even need to be a steam app but to work with remote play thing, that's Jordan, like that sounds like a really bad deal until you finish the rest of it and it's like that's all these other stores are offering. And I'm looking at yep. you, Origin, EA, yep. Humble, Epic. So mm -hmm. like you don't have future and parody, guys. You, you're not, you don't have a very convincing argument. Steam has this locked down because of all the shit that they've invested in built into it. Mm -hmm. like, and this all boils down to the exact same thing. Developers want to get more money. That this is this is just coming down to money because they see the stores as you're just a store. You didn't make the game. You don't deserve 30%. This has been at the root of everything. And I still fail to see how this benefits the end user. The people who are actually buying the games. Are they going to price the games lower if they have to pay a lower hey, cut hey, to the hey, store? Hey, hey, like, Pedro, fuck, Pedro, they will. Pedro, let's, <laughs> that's crazy talk. Let's not, that's not an adult. <laughs> I don't, yeah, but, so I, I, I honestly, I, as an end user, I don't fucking see it. So I, I don't. Uh, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I, I, as much as I love to go through this, uh, I, so if you follow Sophie Holt on Twitter, she's actually <laughs> talked about this a little bit. She's talked about a bit of the finances from Steam and how like it doesn't really represent, even, even though the majority of her purchases are from Steam. The cut that she derives from a lot of the games that she gets uh, or that she puts out is not comparable to. Um, even lower sales on other platforms. And I, this, this is really a problem that affects indies. And I think we, we have to, we kind of have to listen to them because they're the ones who are suffering through this. They're the ones who don't have the discoverability. Um, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's complex nuanced issue. You can't solve it with sound bites. Oh, fine. Well, let's talk about some good <laughs> stuff from steam, a golden week. 
Yes. Speaking of sound bites, um, actually, no, let's not do that. No, let's talk I, about I dodged games. it. I was going there and I was like, <laughs> nope. Let's, let's talk about games from Japan. Uh, they usually don't have Linux support, but some do. And you might be able to pick up a couple of them on the Golden Week sale. I did some scrolling because there is okay, a lot of Windows I just, icons. I, I just want to go ahead and stop and like give this man a credit, like one full credit, because earlier in the pre pre super service, <laughs> Jordan's like, yeah, I, I scrolled. I found the Linux games, man. <laughs> yes, I did. I, I, I scrolled so you don't have to for about five minutes. Um, and your your choices are uh, Danganronpa, RPG Maker, MV, One Shot, Disgaea 2, and Corpus Party. There are a few more. And Trigger Happy Haver. But yeah, yes. Trigger, Trigger Happy Haver was the <laughs> last one on the list. I didn't put it on there because I don't care. Um, I, did, I, did, I did see it, though. Is that it, it's like though. that? Oh, yeah. The, well, the games that I like, I'm telling you. I don't, these, aren't even games that I, these aren't even games that I like, aside from Disgaea 2, which go ahead and buy that. Um, but yeah, that said, you know, if you're looking for stuff to round out, your hair pick purchases i because zone of the enders 2 is like seven bucks now i'm like mm, give, give me some yeah. of that i really Sword like that Art on online fatal bullet if you just want to play single player because the multiplayer requires easy anti-cheat mm-hmm. but single player works just fine dragon ball yes. z the uh kakarot Fight. version so, uh same with uh same with fighters uh same with xenoverse as well so there's there's yep. definitely good <laughs> games in here you can pick up for cheap you're just not gonna run them natively on the linux yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's sad. I kind of wish uh, one of the more recent sales or specials that they had, I'll bring this up again. It, wouldn't it be very handy if they had an option to sort by operating system? Yeah, that's what I, yes. yeah, it would, it would have saved me several minutes of scrolling then. And yes. I, I say this valve <laughs> as a potential customer because I'm not sorting through all that shit to um, see what Linux or in other case, what would be available on a Mac. So maybe, maybe. Maybe consider throwing that in. Yeah, Throw not not in. everyone has a Jordan Swung on their team. That's what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> zen, Zen, Zen. We talked about that so much. Of like, it was the thing that kept Black Mesa coming out for at least uh, claimed like the last three years of development. Like we gotta get yeah. this all done. Yeah, and now you can see if it was actually worth it. Uh, so they have a Steam Workshop mod up here uh, that they put up. It is all uh, the Zen Museum. It is all the various iterations of the Zen levels, complete with bu- bugs and performance regressions and so on and so forth. So you can see for yourself how the last section of Half-Life 1 was developed for the remake, Black Mesa. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of nice that they included this. Uh, just yep. I, I, I look forward to the vitriol of like, this is what you spent all your fucking time on, you pieces of shit. <laughs> but um, it, it, it could also be like, what oh, else? I get, or it could just be like, after playing it for five minutes, ah, I get this. You could not have released this. We would have torn you to bits. <laughs> I honestly don't think that they will get a lot of vitriol for it. I think a lot of people, much like us, they're just curious. Like okay, it's like, okay, so what did you spend those three or four years doing? Uh, and yeah, the, they decided. <laughs> Uh, semi interactively uh, show us and let us experience what they had been working on and that's cool but the game is actually out now and you can play the final version so it's cool but that's cool no I'm okay thanks. I don't know I, I, I'm curious <laughs> enough to where I'm going to go play around with it just a little bit and this is very nice of them and you know if there is any series do you think there are any performance regressions they're like we need to put this in and make it more believable <laughs> yeah, just cut the FPS in half. Uh, yeah. Do a bunch of tessellation under the the map. No, no just just, <laughs> like just add like a add a five millisecond wait after every frame gets rendered. Just to... <laughs> <laughs> so we normally get like left out of uh, big Steam news or like when the internet gets mm-hmm. angry, like oh well, we don't get to play. Not this time. Not this time. We get to uh, participate no, in sir. some internet outrage. <laughs> Ooh. We do. Uh, and you if you're a big fan of the 4X uh, grand strategy type of thing, Europa Universalis is probably a game that you're familiar with. And their latest expansion, um, Leviathan, is apparently not doing terribly well. <laughs> uh, see, at the time the article was written, uh, Kotaku said that only 10% of their reviews were positive. 
I checked just before uh, we started recording, 8%. It's down to 8%. What are you talking <laughs> they about? They are Wait, getting... Come on, it's only overwhelmingly on. <laughs> negative. What would ever cause this type of anger from the internet? Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, as it turns today. out, uh, apparently their uh, paradoxes uh, changed the studio that used to handle the expansions for Europe and Universal. Oh. And the new studio... Uh, isn't doing a um, a very good job of it. And, of course, people aren't terribly happy with it. Go figure. <laughs> yeah, the, so, there's yeah. apparently stuff that's just, like, straight up not working. Maps are not working. AI is buggy. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. There was some uh, art. You get some oh, credit. Yeah. You get some <laughs> credit. <laughs> <laughs> Cyberpunk 1444. Well done. Well played. Yeah, um... <laughs> But like, so I, I went on a little review Safari and I looked at all the expansions for Europa Universalis 4 and yeah, the mm -hmm. trend seems to be going down and down and down and down. And the story is that um, so that the game continues to get updates and maintenance and content, uh, the, the deal was like, hey, we're going to put out these expansions. You buy them. That lets us keep the lights on and lets us keep let's let's us remain sort of. Functioning because, you know, this game has a pretty high barrier for entry, not just in terms of cost, but just in terms of like the people who play this game will only play this game because it takes so much mental bandwidth to even like yep. succeed at the at the base difficulty. But apparently these guys have not been holding up their end of the bargain. Maybe it's time to cut bait and just work on Europa Universalis 5. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. That would require a lot of uh, investment for a whole new game. Let's just push out DLC for the old one. <laughs> uh, hi, uh, the Total War series. But you see, <laughs> Sega, you got it right. Just change the skin textures and <laughs> yeah, yeah no, just don't, don't fuck around with the skin gameplay. Pack, call it a whole new game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, they, they add they added two or three more units, whole this, units. I, I'm going to say that that's absolutely. I don't think any of our gems, but the <laughs> Rome Total War things. I think like the third time, Farrell's like, "Hey, you want to review this?" Like, now nah, we're good. We will play this. That's, the, that's why we don't get games from Farrell anymore. <laughs> well, they, yeah, they, no, they, I still get the emails. Just like, oh, new Total War game is out from Farrell. It's like, cool. Yeah. Next. Have fun with that. <laughs> yeah. so, no. Uh, one thing I want to give a mention to, this is more like a little bit of a PSA. I talked about our near disaster last week with um, our near death experience because uh, I picked up the latest near. I'm like, hey, this is going to work on day one with Linux, you know, with Proton, Proton Experimental. I was happy to report, you know, after playing around with it for a minute, I got it up and working. It was a good experience. And like, hey, this runs smooth. I uh, feel safe with it. Apparently, if you get halfway through the first playthrough, it's got a little bug. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's tiny, tiniest of little, it, it crashes the desktop and there's no way around it. So, I mean, if you can overlook that, everything I said last week, completely valid, kids. 100%. <laughs> Apparently, GitHub needs some spoiler tags, though. Right. This, this is this. This was actually kind of fun to dance around because I I don't know. I've never played the game. I'm unfamiliar with the backstory. But it, mm -hmm. it took me a week to get to this point. Um. And yeah, when it just went straight to desktop, and I headed over to uh, you know, Proton's GitHub issue tracker, and they're like, oh, yep, there it is. And we had to dance around. I was like, what are we talking about? I don't know the spoiler, and I didn't want to look it up, right? Because mm. I haven't played that part <laughs> either. So we're like, yeah, the thing that happens between, I think it's, it's called the halfway bug now. So, yeah, there, there, there's a certain critical player choice, and then the crush. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Like, that's the thing. They're, they're clearly working on it. I checked in on the, the ticket earlier today. So did you, Ben? But, like, they're, they're, they're narrowing it down. They're, they, they have, they know why it's happening, sort of. They just don't have a fix yet. Uh-oh. Why'd you go over there? Because <laughs> you're, I'm, I'm a turnip. I Fine. mean, I need to. We'll be I need a turnip to... for a minute. Jeez. No. <laughs> but, yeah, no, the post immediately above uh, Ven's post actually has uh, the logs uh from someone who added the mf plat bits to uh the user settings file and then they just ran it and you can see the exception access violation happens uh with the xgi 
So it's like, okay, that, that we know what uh, the XGI is trying to create the MF um, device manager, and that's not working. And what takes care of, uh, yes, <laughs> someone posted the link to the Media Foundation DLLs, and uh, ah, Microsoft might no. want to get a bit suey if uh, they you do that. <laughs> But yeah, the uh, there's also been um, a ticket raised in the D, um, the XVK uh, GitHub issue tracker because uh, what handles DXGI on Linux is DXVK because we don't have DirectX. Mm -hmm. So that graphics infrastructure is being handled entirely by uh, Wine uh, if you're not using DXVK or DXVK because that's what's taking care of the whole rendering pipeline. Uh, the... And apparently, uh, someone else was saying that it happens on Windows if you're using the XVK on Windows too. So may very well be the fact that uh, the XVK is the culprit on this one. As always, we can safely blame Windows. This all boils down to a design choice made by the developers to use their own fucky video format container for just standard MPEG. I thought yeah. I thought you were gonna say just, develop their game it, for Windows. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the video too because it is a wmv2 file that's just video there's no audio that's it's all it just is video. that's all it is <laughs> oh well hey man i don't think we'll get to play as rocket raccoon anytime soon but second best we make him close he's a wanted <laughs> raccoon that's right a third person raccoon simulator with a storyline and extensive research space yes steal food Ride a skateboard, be inconspicuous, fight with people. Okay, you have my interest. Upgrade skills. Okay, no crafting. Lead a resistance to find the kidnapped family. There, there is crafting. Um, yes, dude. There's, 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 there's base building. I'm, I'm just saying this does not look as unhinged as Goat Stimulator, but it looks well done just from the graphics. And here, maybe I can play the little video trailers. Um, tactical assault raccoon. Could very well be enjoyable, gentlemen. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I kind of based on the trailer in the game description, I'm reading this as uh, Fallout Four Skateboard Raccoon. Um, I have my attention to say the very least. Um, yeah, the base building it, looks very Fallout Four ish. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and and I thought like the the lock picking is very Skyrimy, very very much an open world type thing. I will say though, the the asking price is a little high to satisfy your curiosity, and it is early access. But also, you can just it's like Untitled Goose Game, but you have opposable thumbs. What kind of awful shit can you get up to? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you can't say that like it's a bad thing, man. Um, what yeah, are we looking at nineteen ninety nine. Early access, yeah. currently out. What does it take to run it? Anything fancy? Maybe not. Okay, so this was 1204, 64-bit, 2 gigajoules of RAM, 5 gigs of space. I'm down with that. Yeah, 20 bucks I might. Um, that's right at that price. Now, if that was a baked game, they're like, hey, it's done. Yeah, I'll take the taste of 20 bucks. Yeah, early access. yeah. that would like, be different, mm. but it's still early access. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that raccoon has a gun. <laughs> Shut <laughs> <laughs> all right uh that's gonna do that we need to uh get ready for some news yeah coming up next nvidia is poisoning the well and yeah i don't know I, yeah yay maybe also piss five <laughs> and wouldn't you know it we've uh we've beaten that horse once again for another week it's we time didn't. to put whatever is left back into the freezer so it's still there for next week but we have a freezer before we get to the news uh, wait a minute <laughs> yes where <laughs> where yeah you've, you've been holding out on me man Thank i didn't you, know we man. had a fridge <laughs> we do now <laughs> shut up <laughs> actually no don't shut up uh right. actually tell the people what where they no, can I, uh, I got a problem i, I have yeah, two, right. you, two we, we could have had snacks Fuck, this man. entire time <laughs> two spoiled aardvarks because no freezer <laughs> <laughs> well, you, well, you need to install Linux on them before, you know, they do go hey, bad. Man, you yes. gotta work your way up. You gotta <laughs> That's work what the Linux 3 is for. <laughs> that, 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 one, that one's on you. If you want to buy me a mini fridge, because apparently I want snacks, you can head on over <laughs> to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. It's a great place to be because you can support the show and get some cool stuff in return, like access to our Discord, access to our show notes. Our disco? To we got a disco too? We do. Burn, baby, burn. Fuck all zeros. See, I didn't know about that. That. Okay. Ah. <laughs> that, that's that's because it's roller disco and it's only me. 
You, well, you're welcome for that mental image, by the way. Yeah, uh, becoming a member of our Patreon gets you some cool stuff. Discord, show note access, as I said, the pre-pre super shows. And, you know, you can watch us go through networking problems for about 45 minutes this week. Yeah, and apparently um, we can start doing it in the freezer. Yeah, apparently <laughs> we, we can we can chill the fuck out. Um, we got, it's not that big a freezer. Let's face it. The horse, there's not much left of it. <laughs> not with that attitude, but we, we do have some new Patreons. We got to think, uh, minus nine, Holy Toast and Monica, who is in discord right now with us. Now, so the thank, challenging thanks. thing about that is Pedro, you have to tell us something. No one knows a new fact about all three Ooh. of them. Uh, let's see. Uh, minus, minus nine, nine is, uh, one better than, uh, minus 10. So that is, All right. <laughs> I mean, we, we, all, we already knew that <laughs> get, get more creative with the next one, Pedro. You're really Ooh. dropping the ball here. Okay. So, uh, Holy toast he's too busy uh, fucking with his freezer. Apparently. I don't know. Um, yeah. He's, he's got like Ben and Jerry's ice cream. <laughs> Fucking man, I want some ice cream. <laughs> a holy toast was anointed with the uh, holy butter, which is uh, something you get from churning the holy milk, which comes from the holy cow. One thing I do want to mention: um, get, holy, get, grab toast. A holy toast is a new executive producer, which means that you, um, if you like this nonsense, you can even join us in the pre-pre super shows and with a live video stream. So, thank you very much. Yeah. No. Yes, and uh, yeah. Monica. The, well, Jordan's already mentioned that <laughs> she's in Discord uh, talking to us. I was gonna get away with that one, but no, 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 can't, no, no such luck. <laughs> gotta, gotta, gotta flex uh, that creativity see. muscle. <laughs> Is he gonna make a friends joke? Know. Let's find out. <laughs> no, I didn't watch enough friends to make a friends joke. But no, Monica is of the three new Patreons, the one who decided let's use our actual name allegedly <laughs> as far as allegedly. you know <laughs> unaccounted yes. for real name nikita khrushchev <laughs> <laughs> there you go you accuse her of being canadian <laughs> there you go that's something like more creative than she's up to our patreon and used her name oh man um we we, we have but we have some I other do, stuff um, go ahead I do have a thing uh, that I'm contractually obliged to read because this time I can actually read it because there's a bit of a swear word and on uh, on Wednesday I couldn't. So uh, I got Torchlight working in Lutris and Strider's like, yeah, you're going to pay for that. So he sent me the uh, crucial P1 one terabyte NVMe SSD. And thank you very much for that. And he says... <clears throat> This is for getting Torchlight to work on Lutris and not acknowledging, not acknowledging it was real work. Next time you try to pull this shit, uh, I'll send you something bigger. Consider it a warning from Strider. Okay, Jordan, thank you, Jordan. Did you, did you <laughs> happen to be around in Discord when Pedro was just going through the list of games that? Were, yeah, I, I, okay. I, I was. Did, did you have the first thought of like you hadn't even fucking tried to get these running, man? Because Pedro's is like, yeah, this works, this works. Oh, you just got to change this. I mean, <laughs> like, I, I'm sorry. This is, I do not spend time. I There was a different life where I was like hammering on wine, but that was just to make guides. But I was like, that, yeah, that, that was like option These two. were the native versions. Uh, yeah, but still. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you know what? Look at, look at all the games that Strider has on Lutris. It makes no sense that the creative Lutris would have that many games. You should just spend more time testing them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess he I wants know. to develop Lutris, not you know, test the games. <laughs> right, uh, but you know, we, we got we got other things to show real quickly. Uh we have wish zones. Yes. If you want to, if you want to continue to buy Pedro stuff that he can stick in his freezer that apparently no one else has, you can head on over to LinuxGameCast.com, put the mouse over the support tab. We have uh wish lists for the three of us. I will uh, give a quick shout out, real quick, because uh if you're watching live, you might have a chance at this. This guy's back, it doesn't show up in stock. And I'm probably not going to talk myself into buying it. But if you were looking for, I know I mentioned to you, Jordan, last time they were in stock, that AC yeah, 34 yeah. inch ultra wide 34, they're renewed, but they're under 300 bucks. So if you want to get one for yourself is what I'm saying. Not for, 
And you know, if it if it doesn't fit you, I'll take it. It's how, it's how, it's how it is. Um, yeah, but you, uh, we we have wish zones. You can buy stuff off it. If you like Strider, buy some stuff for us. You can send us a note that we got to read. Um, uh, mm-hmm. so there's that. We got a store, store.linuxgamecast.com. You can buy your LGC branded merch and confuse people on the street. Um, but you can also buy an LGC mask and socially distance appropriately unless you're vaccinated. And 100 which for realsies, the shirts is, blink just like that. They absolutely do. Yeah. It It's like a glitch in the Matrix because it turns out we're living in a simulation and we figured out the secret sauce <laughs> to make our shirts blink. That's the only thing we've done. We could dodge bullets, but instead we got blinky shirts. We probably would, man. You yeah, know? that takes that takes effort. Like you got to shoot yourself with some RGB smaller bullets shirts. to build up uh, <laughs> an immunity before you start actually risking your life yeah. dodging bullets. Unfortunately, creativity like that requires ice cubes for your cold drinks, which we can't make. <laughs> Because, yeah, no freezer. <laughs> Everything can be solved by the freezer now, apparently. Apparently, right? Damn you, <laughs> Freezy Pop. Well, you know you, you know what? May, maybe you need your freezer to cool your brand new video card that may or may not work for you. It's Jensen's kitchen with all his spatula power. Man, this, this, I, I want to sit back and watch the world burn. Because this is NVIDIA's hot take. This is their bright idea. What are they going to do to combat? Miners, which is a tricky thing, because let's face it, NVIDIA, like any other company, is a service corporation. They're very short. They they, they don't really (laughs) care about you, man. They're like, whatever. We're still making money. If miners are buying the cards, your gamers are buying the cards. Now, there does, you know, you got to think about it. Like, they got to have a think about, like, long term, though. You don't want to piss off your base customers that are going to be coming back to you every three, every four years, as opposed to, like, you get a little bump with the miners. Well, what are they planning on doing? They're going to... Allegedly, or this is what he's going to say, they're going to do a quiet launch of the RTX 30 LHR low hash rate series of chips that you can't tell. There's not going to be any indication on the packaging, on the card itself, visual inspection. Mm-mm. You're not going to know until you get this thing, you get it plugged in and turn around and try to mine, you know, your Ethereum, whatever people are mining these days, coinies. And Dogecoin. it just gives you atrociously <laughs> bad performance without, according to NVIDIA, harming their performance for gaming. Now, the um, S- the SQ, they're going to be rolling that out. You're not going to be able to figure out what it is. Like, when you get it, you'll find out, like, once you've installed it and set it up. I love this idea. Now, you know, if you want to, like, maybe they'll find a way to bypass this. This isn't going to be like the uh, 3080s. When they rolled out, you know, that was just like a software thing. These things are going to be locked like this. I'm assuming just through the BIOS and like, you're going to have to like break out some JTAGs and stuff. To they like whatever. say that it doesn't need a VBIOS update. So, well, yeah, this isn't <laughs> going to need a VBIOS update because it's coming out of a factory like that. I'm assuming yeah. now. I, I, I don't think they're going to do it in Silicon, but it's in the realm of possibility. You never know, man. You never know. But. I mean, the 3060 was supposedly going to be a uh, thing between the VBIOS and the driver, but then NVIDIA mistakenly, quote unquote, released a driver that completely undermined the whole fucking thing, pun intended. Ah. So. (laughs) This is where chaos, chaos is going to come in because if this sticks, this is because the barrier to entry to this, if it's significant enough to where these cards are not going to be useful. There's no way to get around it, you know, so you can have your giant mining farms. And we're talking miners are buying power plants. They bought a power plant in New York. Okay. So just perspective, these people get cash, but you know, if it's just <laughs> time sink is too much for the return on this. Retailers are going to get all kind of shit. You know, you imagine if you're a retailer, people are going to be buying, hey, I'll take this entire block of how many you can sell me. And well, you know, eight of them <laughs> are usable, but I need to return these uh, for retailers. You know, like no return. Policy. <laughs> these other <Yelps>. 28 <laughs> scalp them, baby. That, that, this, this is what's going to happen is they're going to buy out the stock. They're going to test the ones that actually are non hash rate limited. And then they're going to sell the other ones on eBay for another. You can get your, your new 3060 low hash rate for $700 because well, we bought them you all. You do have to remember though. I mean, miners are buying from um, eBay and stuff like that as well. That's true. Mm-hmm. It'll, it'll, it'll definitely, definitely, it'll be the thing where if you want a new card, maybe, maybe look at the secondary market for that. Ah, That'll damn you. Spoon. See, I knew that ginormous bowl was going to be. Not, not even a bowl. This was a coffee cup. Oh no. 
Okay. <laughs> I'm going to move this out of the way. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, th- this this is just the arms race. Pedro brought it up last week. Now that you have like Chia on hard drives, uh, everything is game for crypto speculators. This is the, the new age we're in. So I don't know what sort of drastic shit is actually ultimately going to be required for these. No, I do want to ask you, um, just since we're on this topic. I just want to see how this is going to be handled because I, I, I was serious. I've checked out of the video card and like, I'll just wait a year. Fine. I'll be patient. I don't need one personally. I just want one for the studio. Um, the, I think it was Samsung that came out and I posted this in our discord earlier. Mm-hmm. They said, Hey, uh, if you use our drives for mining the Chia, we're not going to like honor your warranty. Like how the f- do you think you're going to be able to tell that? Don't, don't know. It's like I said, it's, it's going to be some drastic stuff or, you know, the planet will melt. Well, Pro- probably the latter. <laughs> here's the real reason I bring this up, especially with the hard drive stuff. I'm like, Hey, may I, I, I got a bad drive. It's clapped out. And they're like, no, you were clearly mining with this. So we're not going mm-hmm. to, there could be problems. <laughs> I, I, I wonder what kind of I wonder if they have like some embedded smart statistic or something. I, I have no idea. Not currently on the drive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, Pedro, we talked about this on Wednesday. Uh, some people like to play their PS4 and PS5s on their pies. Yes. Well, uh, they probably wanted to and there wasn't a way to do it, but there is no. Well, there has been one for the past four months. If this um, GitHub repo has anything to go by. Yeah. Chiaki. It's uh, currently available. You can download it for your Pi and play your uh, PS4 remote plays and supposedly a PS5 as well. So, yeah, you can get Lude. for Linux for <laughs> you can get for Linux, uh, BSDs, uh, be it on x86 or ARM. Just, yeah, go have fun with it. Uh, it also runs on the Nintendo Switch. Thanks, NVIDIA, for uh, screwing up that particular architecture. Everyone's very appreciative uh, about being able to run Homebrew on their Switch. Jordan hasn't decided to do that yet. Uh, yeah, the, it's, it's um, because I don't want to pay money for a switch after I brick my only one <laughs> that has my goddamn Pokemon save on it. Fair, fair, okay. But yeah, the we were talking about this on Wednesday, and the I, I was uh, looking at Discord at the time, and uh, Notoku, one of our um, Patreons. Thank you very much for that. Uh, actually, apparently has uh, tried Chiaki and says, because I mentioned that the original PS4 uh, remote play software on Windows works badly. Uh, it, there's a lot of latency and it's not a very good image quality. But uh, Notoku was saying that, yeah, it, it Chiaki is much better. So, hey. Yeah. If you still. Well, I was. <laughs> I was going to say, still no love for PS5, though. So if you want your Pi S5, which I wrote down, and it looks a lot like piss uh, in the show notes. So if you, <laughs> if you, if you, if you want piss, Chiaki is not for you. That, piss 5. Yeah, the, just the Pies has bugged me on show titles so many times. I'm like, no, I got to find a way to, you know, I can't use uh, that. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's piss. Yeah, it's just piss. <laughs> piss. This is kind of neat. Um, so extracting like the uh, user ID is not that big a deal, huh? I guess not. No. All right. No, apparently not. <laughs> I don't have a PS4. PS5. Gee, Jordan, we should find somebody that has a PS4 and a Raspberry Pi 4. I, I got half of those things. <laughs> My Raspberry Pi 4 is in a Game Boy case. <laughs> Oh, it doesn't. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that, that totally stops you from connecting things to it. Uh. I mean, it stops me from turning on the PS4. <laughs> I mean, nothing stopping you from turning on that PS4 other than you. This you, is entirely. You do not yes. understand, Pedro. <laughs> the second I looked at him wrong, he came up like in, a, in his brain mates. He's like, I got eight excuses ready to go. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe he's waiting for a Futex 2 support on the Dude, PS4. this is above my pay grade, but it sounds neat. Yeah, it's above my pay grade as well, but I've been, we've been following this just because, you know, uh, memory operations have been a long-standing pain point for Windows developers coming over to Linux. Um, so now, uh, Futex 2, we've talked... 
that's been there's been some support for it in Proton, uh, implementing uh, implementing it in a way that is closer to how Windows does it to make things a little bit easier for Wine Syscall translation. Uh, looks like the Futex two patches are ready for review, though. Um, nothing too earth shattering immediately in terms of a performance boost, uh, and in three out of four tests, some minor performance improve improvements, no regressions. But you know that's not the only thing. Um, apparently, no. yeah, apparently reQ operations take a 21% hit overall. But again, these are, these are, these are benchmarks with GCC. We don't know how they'll, uh, we don't know how they'll actually affect, uh, IRL performance. It's also a relatively new solution as well. So, you know, who knows, maybe within a year's time, they'll have hammered out some of the performance trade-offs. Uh, how exactly is this going to play out? So I assume, um, a good way or a way to think of this is because we currently have e-sync, right? Mm -hmm. In Steam. This, this, this will sort of natively implement what e-sync is trying to do. Yeah. Okay. And this is, you know, just kind of reading through that, it looked like a few text one. It was kind of like, uh, never really, not everyone yeah. could get in the same gear with how that was going to be done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, 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 we we talked about a presentation in, uh, regarding this a while ago when they were talking about the state of wine, and there there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of debate. There was a lot of uh, people discussing how to actually implement this in a way that like is not just useful for games, but there's other use cases where someone might want a futex as well in um, in like just cloud applications or you know general purpose programming. So they ne they needed to make it so that it is you know a proper implementation as opposed to hey we put this thing so that wine can run faster. That's it. Mm. And yeah, everything everything that would require a significant computational load with multiple threads at once, like video games do. <laughs> so yeah, having that kind of performance advantage would be very nice. But yeah, the four percent gain in performance on average doesn't really match up to the twenty one percent drop in the reQ operation. So is the trade off worth it at this point? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> I mean, and it, that, that that gap can close. Uh, they freely say, like, yeah. this is this is a new implementation. The other the other the other way of doing it has had years of development. We've had a year of development. It's not reasonable mm -hmm. to expect complete and utter like performance domination, but it's it might be coming. Indeed. So, so yes. Jagged Lions is back. Stratadella. I'm glad you tackled that. I was like, Strack <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> Let's <get that> <laughs> Not eighteen zero. Uh, pretty much a bug fix. They rolled out that four hundred and seventy nine commits since the last release. Thirty bugs were fixed. Five of which were known to really dislike ice cream, including vanilla. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, these these were actually bugs fixed in the Jagged Alliance two game uh, that were just long standing. I think that's pretty. Deep. Uh, one thing I did notice in this because uh, this drives me because this is turn based, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, configurable game speed, which I think SimCity figured that out back in the day, um, which you know wasn't really turn based. But I, I hate hurry up and wait. Go and do this, and you're waiting on the AI. Yeah, yeah. Well, the 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 other the other thing they added to this release is app image, so you can run it on your distro of choice uh, without having to worry about dependencies. It's it's good for these open source games that like oh I, you don't have to worry about dealing with weird build dependencies it's all in the app image it's a consistent platform as well oh, so no, people you need a c plus plus 17 compatible compa oh, yeah. okay that's fine also also <laughs> don't build it against uh, anything older than sdl 207 or you will have bad a time bug man that's a threat what? We're we're on SDL two oh like thirteen or fourteen now, so if you're still on that, maybe consider upgrading your SDL. You, you never know, man. You got to think about like Kadro, uh, Kadros, yes, Kadros. That's K your new name. Good old, good old, good old Kadro Smateus. I was going with hey, it's app. <laughs> Smateus, Smateus, Kadro. Yes. <laughs> I thought about that. Um, like old versions and something you wouldn't expect to be old, but uh, Q Jack CTL, like with uh, his KDE Neon was. Ancient years out of date. So, 2004. <laughs> so you do run in stuff like that. It's good that they pointed that out. And, uh, oh, we got two more. In, in yeah, Europe. we do. Eudora uh, is the first one, comes from the. I'm, I'm uh, not Adora, you're Adora. Page. 
Eudora. <laughs> Eudora. <laughs> but yeah, version uh, update 2.1.0 for the, what was originally a game jam project and they just kept on updating, but they seem to be uh, slowing down on that because apparently, so they say, there is going to be a proper version of Eudora. So... Uh, we'll have to see what they decide to uh, do with that. But yeah, th this new version comes with um, a tab color changes when building uh, is waiting to be placed. So yeah, when you're placing down buildings, it changes the actual color of the thing so that you know that it's not placed yet. It's still hovering. It's, uh, so you, yeah. You, 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 might, you might be asking, what the hell is Eudora? Uh, nope. It's sort of like an old school <laughs> Command and Conquer style uh, game if you like DOS real-time strategy. Dune. Re exactly. Yeah, this, it's, this it's, West, Westwood Studios. I, I, have, I have one category for this, Dune 2. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, yes. Westwood Studio <laughs> game. Um, also, uh, apparently, if you're making a Game Maker Studio game, uh, one way to improve performance across the board is use the YYC compiler, which is apparently a alternative one to the one that Game Maker provides. Uh, apparently, yo-yo compiler. Apparently, that's what that's what Control F Linux on this page. I can't hear you over my clang. Clang, clang, <laughs> clang with the trolley. <laughs> G lib C with the bell. Too long Blue for text. a show title. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know, if you if you're a, if you're a game maker studio dev, maybe look at checking out YYC. See if it makes yeah. your game run less it's like poop. Indeed. So modding under Linux, you know, playing games, we got that down. That's easy. It's boring these days. It's great. But sometimes you want to change your game. Sometimes you want to add, you know, yeah. little, little things to enhance your experiences uh, to the game that you're playing. Things like, you know, a freezer. And yeah, or, 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 or some kind of iced beverage. Mm, Anyways, yeah. um, so you might have remembered the X series games that back when Linux Gamecast started, you, you could play X3 on Linux. They they were nice enough to actually they still keep it update, man. They they do. They they have been pretty Linux friendly for as long as like they have been physically able to do so. As a but company, I guess, somebody in that uh, yeah somebody up top is like, yeah, I, I use Linux. So, yeah, so, Linux. So, so, These have to, yeah. Yeah, so someone someone up top is running Debian on his daily driver, and goddamn, he's going to be able to play his goddamn game. But yeah, if you want to make uh, mods, it's a bit of a... So they, they designed this game to actually run on Linux. Getting it modded on Linux, they didn't really plan that out too much. So Biko over here, the link to his blog post is in the show notes, has attempted to sort of reverse engineer the thought process. Um, we've looked at some of the uh, Lua decompilation decompilation issues uh in some other uh game engines things like how um lua compiled under microsoft doesn't necessarily <laughs> compile well under linux but then you you have to like go track down some weird ass versions of some custom builds of lua to get it working with your particular game you can read through this entire thing because again much like futex 2 way over my head but these sorts of post-mortems and teardowns are fascinating because i'm like, so happy when i see something like this simply because like you documented it thank you right right <laughs> you, you 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 collected all the various links and like random google searches and you put them in one fucking this place this is so valuable and important you know that is mm. having these resources and putting it out there for, if, you, if you have to like work something all the way back I don't care where you put it. Just put it somewhere. I, I know a lot of you looking like, that's weird and quit playing with audio stuff, but I'm doing it for a reason because there's other people that are sitting there going, hey, and for the stuff like this, if you're thinking about the next guy who's getting into modding, maybe modding is how he got into game development 20 years that, from that, now is the new hotness. That that's the, that's a very common pathway for people getting into games, yeah. right? Like you just start fucking around with the mods and all of a sudden you're like, hey, I got pretty good at this. I can get a job doing it. So I'm a huge fan of somebody who looks at some and says, fuck it. I'm doing it on Linux and does it. Good on you, man. Yes. Yep. Moral of the story. If you use Lua, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Coming up next, we're committing tax fraud with vegetables. It's yes. going to be great. It's time to plant our feet in the ground and give our opinion about games. It's the shared position. This week, we're taking a look at Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion, done by Snoozy Kazoo on the Unity Engine for about 15 bucks. What is it? Play as an adorable yet troublemaking termit. Turnip. 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 Avoid paying taxes. <laughs> Solve fantastic puzzles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
harvest crops and battle massive beasts all in a journey to tear down a corrupt vegetable government. Uh, we got to thank Snoo- Snoozy Kazoo. I want keep wanting to call it Snooty Kazoo. Mm-hmm. Snoozy Kazoo <laughs> for uh, sending us some keys over Curator Connect. I guess I'm, get- I'm, guess I'm getting started today because reasons so on fedora 34 64 bit with the 80 uh the fx 8150 and the rx uh 580 runs out of the box uh same on the r9 3900x and the gtx 1080 ti no real issues performance wise um character art is pretty good everything is kind of clear although in some of the larger boss arenas there is some character blindness just because of the low res gla- gra- graphics god <laughs> damn i am completely <laughs> fucked up today i need to do my taxes um the ability the ability to switch your button prompts for um for your controllers so you can get your squares and your triangles for playstation very much appreciated that whacked out controller layout though <laughs> not so much um it takes a lot of inspiration from zelda it uses the uh, Link to the Past controller layout, and you know it is very much a Zelda game uh, from a fun perspective. And you know there's nothing wrong with that. OG Zelda is a classic for a reason. It worked for a lot of uh, worked for a lot of reasons, and this game does a pretty good job of capturing that essence. Uh, also, you know I, I see you using a watering tin instead of a lamp to you know water things instead of light things on fire. It's, it's a clever little gameplay reference. There is quite a bit of backtracking, though, over such a small area. Everything is basically on the opposite side of where it needs to be. And your job is to bring it there. Much like Zelda, it's an endless series of fetch quests. Um, although it is pretty well telegraphed. You can start walking by and talking to people be like, oh, oh, I need to be back here. If some, some, Something's going to show up eventually or I'm going to get an ability. So, you know, telegraphing that is pretty, it's pretty OK. But it is very linear once you start realizing that. Um, the sense of humor. Very good. Um, our silent protagonist is just delightfully chaotic neutral, tearing up every single document or like anything <laughs> that it gets. It's like, I made you this lovely piece of art. Fuck you. It's great. I love him. He's, he's my spirit animal. Spirit tournament. Tournament. Turnip. Ah, God damn it. Um, the more, yeah, I mean, the, the moral of the story here is fuck paperwork. Um, and it also really shits achievements at you. It makes a joke about it very early on. It's like, here's the trophy. You got to reward the player frequently. Hoo-hoo. Um, <laughs> All, and I, I'm a big fan of the Adventure Time ask horrible shit covered up in cutesy shit. And once once the story starts progressing, you're like, oh, I see what's happening. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm on board. Um, all in all, all I can't really say that I learned much about evading taxes or not paying my taxes from this game. So it kind of failed in that regard. I got to give it one chair. I'm kidding. I'm giving it three chairs. It's pretty fun. <laughs> Yeah, it is. And uh, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X, it launched out of the box. It holds 144 at 2560 by 1440. You can rebind the keyboard buttons, but you can't rebind the controller buttons. I lost count of how many times I hit the B button to try and dodge. Oh my God. Uh, (laughs) And I hit X to attack when B is actually attack and X is to select the items. Like, did. If you're going to go with that particular control scheme, let mm-hmm. us scrubs that are used to the new way of doing things change the buttons, please. That that, that would have been nice. But yeah, the graphics and sound, look at them. You can't really hear the sound, but yeah, the, there's no voice acting, but the music is on point, especially like the true final boss fight um, music, the background music. That was amazing. And I played it three times, so I should know. <laughs> uh, on a technical level, it is much better than a lot of the games we've thrown chairs at recently. Looking at you, uh, Metro Exodus. I mean, even this first boss and fight, that's well done. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> and it is pretty fun. It It is a genuinely Wait, fun game. you didn't game. use the bombs? I did not use the bombs. Oh. I, I I didn't. I've, I, exclusively for all the other bosses, it's like, well, you have to use the bombs. Okay. But for this one, you can just poke it in the pork butt. Well, that's true. You can three shot. Yes. <laughs> and it, it, I was dealing significant damage just poking it. So I I did. And when you once you get to the end, there's uh, you actually found uh, you find one of the nukes that uh, sort of tell Spoilers. you what happened. 
Yes, and I smacked the nuke a couple of times, and I got an achievement for doing that because the thing happens like <laughs> that's pretty funny. So yeah, that got a significant chuckle out of me. It is a short game. I it took me four hours to a hundred percent it, and there is a uh, speed run mode, so you can probably do it much faster than I did. Uh, the Supposedly, the devs say that there's going to be more content. That's version 110 that they are telling people to look out for. But I can only judge it on what's there, and what's there is not bad at all. It is short, and it pads itself by forcing you to go all across the maps to find the one veggie or the one fruit that you need to talk to in order to progress. Sometimes you just need to talk to the same veggie twice, and they will give you the key or the thing that you need to continue. It's not clearly signposted, but the game is so tiny that you can probably find what you're looking for just by talking to everyone on the way to whatever it is that you're doing. It is that kind of kid's game that doesn't treat kids like brain-dead sheep, and that should be celebrated. So as far as I'm concerned, it gets three chairs. Would you say it's a kid's game? I would say it's more like targeted at Absolutely. all ages. Absolutely. If you're a horrible parent, buy it for your children. Now, yes. how does it run? Over here in Vinland on Debian 11-ish, uh, AMD Threadripper 1920X with an NVIDIA 2060 and 32 gigajoules of RAM. And it runs great. 1080p, 2160p, no issues whatsoever. It works in full screen and it's got a windowed mode. Good on you, developer. Pat on head. Now, the as both of these have mentioned, these, that's Pedro and Jordan, by the way, the default button layout is bass backwards, man. It, it is Nintendo level. Like what the fuck you have to recalibrate your brain mates every single time you pick this game up because this is wrong. And as Pedro said, you can't change them at all. Yay. Boo. Seriously. You, you did that released a game like that in 2021. Bad dev. Fix that. Now, outside of that, everything else was solid. No performance issues. Played through it. No crashes. No graphical glitches. And as far as the way it looks, it looks great. Art's well done. Very cutesy. And, uh, well, I'm 20 minutes in. And, man, do I love a surprise. That's why I love doing this. You know, we've definitely gotten static. Like, why are you playing this dumb bullshit game? Because sometimes you run across little gems. And this happens to be one of them. You know, I, I'm in love with the little cute characters. And it's just get like a semi-dark tone. Just right over every single... You know something's up. And... Let's talk about the mechanics itself. At its core, Turnip Boy commits tax evasion. It's a Zelda parody. I don't want to call it a clone with a bunch of fetch quests, like turned up to 11. That's just what you're doing most of the time. You get a sword, you poop some shit, you collect some items, you murder a snail for rent money. Spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you rip up the check for the chain. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck paperwork. True story. That should calibrate you to what you're going to be in for, all while ripping up, you know, everything that's paper based, man. Fuck trees, apparently. Now, it's cute. It looks apart, controls well enough, has a serviceable story, and most importantly, it's bizarre. Like, it, it, it's bizarre, like, fucking all reasons. I, I like that in the game. Now, when you take that and you mix it in with the good writing, albeit it's a little topical, like there's even like a mask joke in there. I'm like, well mm -hmm. done. I don't know if that's going to age, but um, you do have a fun, quirky little game. And I do mean little, as uh, Pedro has pointed out, since this one like collects in around the two hour mark, if you're really putting your time into it, 200 percent it. And hey, I'm going to say this, if they can fuck the controls by adding the option to rebind, because you Again, you seriously released a game in 2021 without rebindable controls. And, well, add some more content. Um, because if you do that, you got something worth picking up. Because right now it's $14.99. That's a wee bit on the high side for what effectively amounts to part one. You know, I'm, I, isn't that right, Frozen Bite? Didn't you learn something <laughs> from that? <laughs> But yeah, it, it's serviceable. It works. And uh, honestly, can I just say this? I'm going to say two chairs. Uh, let me get both of your opinions. I just want more, though. Yeah, it would, it would be it would yes. be really nice if they, they expanded it out a little bit. I uh, add, added to like more mechanics because it, it's very much you have to deal with minor things with the sword and then the big problems you have to water your way out of. Right. I wish they I wish they give you a couple more tools just to play around with. Oh, they do. 
Okay, well, they I guess I gotta get past the third pot. boss. <laughs> well, yeah, the, the, <laughs> they the, literally the portal give you a portal there. pot. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's like, the, is, does they give you anything else beyond that? Because I'm pretty sure that, that that is there to solve like four puzzles. See, okay. Uh, no, that's there to help you progress things, yes. It, it is genuinely clever to the point of uh, when you're trying to get into the barn, it's like, oh, no, you need to be a tier three sub. Yeah, then you got to go to the yes. subway. <laughs> yeah, and that was it's like, you're thinking, oh, that's a cute reference. And it took me a minute and I went back to the sub shop. I'm like, oh. Yeah, it's like, yep. oh, the sandwich, right? <laughs> well, well, well played. And there's so many little things like this. They keep it playing. Yeah. So, yeah. Good and De- Definitely. Not like, I, I, I don't know. Com- compare this to like the game from last week that emphasized the sense of humor. This is a lot more like organic funny as opposed to like the very calculated, purposefully funny. I right. don't know. Uh, all right. Well, that's going to do it here. Coming up next. So long, Pedro. Bye bye. Well, I do have uh, one of those old school whisks, but that's not uh, relevant because we're uh, at the end of the show. It's the hate mail. It's uh, yeah, it's I got to say, if you've you made it this far, school kudos. Whisk, are you just looking like the ones that are in the stick? I, yeah. So. I, I, I didn't think he meant like the manualist. I thought he meant like the, the egg beater yeah, like the, or something like that. Yeah. Something you could like chase somebody with. Because if you just no, chase no, me with a regular whisk, ones. I'm not running. I'm going to like, hey, go for it. Like right here. But if you got like Do you have- whisk, I'm like, no, I don't want any of that. You haven't seen my war whisk. I mean, you could have like sharpened that whisk. It could be deadly. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's definitely not sharpened. It might be. Uh, I question whether or not that's actually stainless steel because it's uh, starting. To oh, it's rust. stained. With blood. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you'd like to stay in our particular inboxes with uh, whatever blood. it is that you like to tell us, yes, uh, you can absolutely do that. Just go to LuxGameCast.com and hit the contact button. There's the forum you can fill. Just pick LGC Weekly and your hate <laughs> mail will be... Matology. <laughs> That's the worst kind of uh, Scientology. Uh, except I don't make money out of it. I really am the worst. The, <laughs> the, um, yeah, if you're a game developer and you'd like to send us some keys, make sure you send us at least three. Otherwise, well, we're just going to make fun of you. That, that's that's going to be the that's thing. Kind of I'm deal. sorry. We get too much of that. Just one thing. Uh, doubly so. This also goes for a Steam Curator page. Um, feel free to leave us a comment. Any place like that might get back to you, might not. If you want to guarantee that we're going to see it. Patreon. That'll work. Also, the contact form. I'm just saying. There's yes. a, you're going from 100% chance with Patreon to 99.9 using the yes. contact form. Keep that in mind. Jordan, it seems somebody's been watching that old Mateus boy play the video games. Oh, I thought you were going to say in the bathroom. But yeah, also that. Uh, this is from Synthetic Owl. And they say, Pedro, I'm on my first playthrough of Dark Souls. Prepare to die edition. I was following along with your playthrough, taking the same weapons and upgrades. Oh, so I'm why? kicking myself for not checking beforehand that episodes 9 and 11 are missing. Can you tell me where to go, who to kill to reach where you are in part 10? After beating Ornstein and Smooch. I know it's Ornstein, but whatever. <laughs> I went back to Firelink Shrine and gave Smile. the Creeper her soul back. <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> Smooth, <laughs> and then talk to the Frampt who puked me out near another shrine to place a bull on, which I did. How do I proceed? For Solaire's sake, please help me. Smooth, Pedro. Praise the sun. <laughs> but yeah, first the, off, I did- you've been following <laughs> that Yahoo for advice. That that's mistake one, yeah, thirteen, yeah, ma- and eleven. You followed his playthrough exactly. No, bad. Bad, bad, bad. Uh, to be fair, I did do a very good job of uh, going through the game in an order that is very um, welcoming to new Pedro, players. Listen, we both understand that your mom watched your videos and she told you that, but I'm just saying outside of a media no. family. Is okay. the medical owl his mom? <laughs> Pedro, I don't know. my mom, nor my little brother, nor even my dad. Uh, I was trying to be that. nice. In reality, no one's ever told Pedro that. But you were saying. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, the, I actually got back to Synthetic Owl on YouTube, but I'll just do a mini reiteration here. Basically, uh, episode nine was just after uh, Ornstein and Smow. Smooth. 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 Uh, Smuff. <laughs> uh, you, uh, what I did was after getting the Lord Vessel from Guinevere, I shot her 
with an arrow to dispel the illusion. And uh, so it's like killing Jerry head, for red way. money. Yes. <laughs> uh, and Don Ar- Anna Orlando goes dark. And then I got invaded a bunch of times and got killed because, yeah. Uh, the um, episode 11 was mostly just me going through the painted world of Ariamis. So. Not not losing much there. The only difference between what uh, Synthetic Owl is doing and what I did was instead of me going with Frampt, I went with uh, Kath. So there's, yeah, that, that that's the one difference. Uh, and it doesn't really matter where you go after that. Uh, you can kill the four kings later on or you can kill them early on. It's very much up to you. <laughs> Now, I, I, um, so, as far as addressing what happened to the videos, we, uh, oh, I apparently am the only one allowed to export them because I said that at some point. Um, new yes. rule, feel free to do that yourself. So sometimes they get lost. Now, if Pedro wanted to be a real pimp, he could record the game and upload it to YouTube on our channel. And so then you get like a I super can high start quality. doing that, yes. No, no, well, what you what you need to do is go find the exact point in Dark Souls you were yeah, at and re-record it. those two ep- those two specific episodes exactly, <laughs> like beat for beat exactly what you did. Same amount of deaths, same moves, same everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that simple would enough. Be tough. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in you. You can do it. You know what I could do is just renumber them so they're in order. <laughs> yes, and everyone would go. What? 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 Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, hey! Thanks for watching Pedro play through it in all seriousness. That's, that's good. That that's there. Like somebody's watching Pedro do something. Yeah, and so, there's a better playthrough. Long term feedback. <laughs> this comes from Matthew. No, not that one. No. Which one? <laughs> well, see, so the problem is, is his last name starts with a C. So I was like, well, that's not going to help. This thing. <laughs> Ah, well, that, that, that's Matthew, not Matthew. Um, he writes in. This is long-term feedback. I, I just wanted to say that the um, in the 10 years or so that you guys have been doing LGC Weekly, I noticed two things. Oh, no. Your podcast format <laughs> today is surprisingly consistent with the way you started. Yep, we fucked it up from the start and we don't learn from our mistakes. Understood. Two, your voices today haven't changed all that much well no Pedro, I, I, Pedro's I mean, gotten a little more grindy we've gotten definitely higher he hit, def he hit puberty so fair I'm, point your mom said puberty what? well done guys keep it up yeah it's, it's called it's called no. menopause <laughs> I'm just gonna watch Pedro collapse right now. This is this is entertaining for me. I don't I don't know about the rest of y'all. <laughs> uh, no, nah, the only thing I gotta say is uh, on that first point, um, <laughs> I guess nothing much changes for the show itself from your end because a lot of things keep changing on the back end. So I guess that's where the change is happening. Uh, as for number two, thank you. Uh, I don't know. I, we have better equipment. Well, except Jordan. Yes. Jordan really likes that AT twenty twenty. He's old school. <laughs> I I don't I don't know. Someone else bought Pedro a new microphone. You gave Pedro. A microphone. <laughs> Thank you very much, mysterious stranger. I know who you are. I now. I, I, I did well. <laughs> I, I I was it was half me, like a third you and a third T Brown. Yeah. But where is that microphone, anyways? I think Nori has it. Uh, right here. <laughs> no, it's not. That's your I hand. Have... We've been over this. That is not a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Is anyone there? Can you hear is me? It, it's in the box for the USB one, and the USB one is in the box for the road one, so there's that. <laughs> All right. Hopefully All right. that's not confusing. Hey, thanks for watching for so long. I know we have some people that been, has been like hanging around. We're just the thing now. And you're like, ah, oh, that's going to be on. Maybe I'll watch it. Maybe I won't. It's, uh, Hi, NSA. Hi. We, 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 we've been keeping it's the been data triggers uh, ent- entertained while they're just sifting through everyone's traffic. Oh, yep. man. Well, kids, that's going to do it. On that bombshell, let's go ahead and bounce out of here on a medium note, not a high note, not a low note. Just one of those notes that, like, you know, walks up to you, opens its arms up, and stabs. So, if you want to get in touch with me, I'm at Vin Stone on Twitter. That's where I'm hanging out, talking nonsense, posting stuff. I'm very active. 
like all three of us. As you will learn if you were in our Discord, where we're spitting out mad UK drill. Yes, that's all we do, pretty much. And um, just at vin at mass.linuxgamecast.com, because we have one of those Mastodon things. Toot toot. I'm John Slung. My voice hasn't changed in 10 years, and you can follow me at The Burning Fool on Twitter or the level of fuckery I'm going to do to this tomorrow when I'm editing. Do it! I dare you! I never <laughs> thought I dare you! <laughs> all right, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> I, on the other hand, am Peter Mateusz. Apparently, my voice hasn't changed all that much, which part of me is very much okay with it. The other part of me is going, I hate my voice, so uh, fuck you. Uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at unaccounted for. That that that's the way you should get in touch with me. Uh, that's it. Really? Is that uh, it? Yeah. Fine, fine. You know what? We're just gonna roll credits. I give up. I give up. You win. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm done. I'm done doing Mickey Mouse. Praise Zenu. Praise Zenu and pass the ammunition. Uh, well, it's 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 been a it's been 554 it's been a of these. Long road. Shut up. You know where you wanted to go with that. Yeah. Oh, we're right. 14 episodes oh, away from your nine years. Bacula. Uh, <laughs> Indeed. We gotta thank our lone advisor Omega, our executive producers, Alias Scott, Michaud, Barb Brett, Mr. Fox Dog, our Theron, Atomicast, Mike G, MT, Drummer Seven, and the Holy Toast, and our lone Little Nicky fan holding it strong, Dark Wing. With the sea monsters, Jack B, Renew, Rider X, Magna, Trudgy, Vertanuda, Justin, Frostclaw, Kyolytics Cast, and the Death Notes, Nova K, Bissell B, Chat B, Romeo V, Marson, System T, Craig, Renee, isn't that? No, that, that's a different Renee. Leonardo, the Kresny, Kim, Smashly G, Chris, Chris, Stephen Jill, and Benjamin. All right, let's see how many Jerlings. Mm -hmm. Who wins? Gee, Steve uh, B, let's see. Joel, you know, minus nine, Shiny Monica, Vay. Ryan, Jonas, Sweet Thomas, Irritant, <laughs> Jolly, Daniel, <laughs> oh, <laughs> so small, really. Evandro. Hey, Steve B. Hey, if you, if you want to sponsor us, if minus you want to shout out at the end of the, uh, <laughs> the podcast, you know, we got a Patreon level for that. We do. Uh, yeah, the beginning of the podcast. Yeah. Bad idea. Yes. Don't do it. Again, we've been over this <laughs> multiple times. Dino fire everyone. We'll see you next time. Give us money. Bye. Five dudes. <laughs>